this is Gail, and my day is not going well so far. I already recorded, or thought I recorded, a video from my Patreons, and when I went to, um, I had to put something in the oven, and when it went into the oven, I turned the recorder off. And I just took it out of the oven and came back and went to turn this on and it said that my memory card was full. Evidently, my recorder was on when I was preparing for my class, for my tutorial, and when I thought I was turning it on, I turned it off. So I'm going to have to start all over again. And the only good thing is, now I won't have to pause when I, um, I won't have to pause when I have to bake, because I've already got a piece baked. So, welcome to my tutorial, patrons. This has just not been my month. I have been so busy, and I apologize that this is late coming. I know that um, you were expecting something at the beginning of the week and it, I mean, in the beginning of the month and it just didn't happen. My drawing, my celebration drawing for 2,000 subbies has just totally taken over my life for a few weeks. It, it's not as easy as I thought, you know, letting somebody comment, you pick a, you know, you go to a, file converter or a random picker or whatever you want to call it and get it done but that's just not how it happened so I'm going to have to uh, uh, matter of fact I, there was another pro project that I wanted to do and I've been thinking about it all month long and trying to um, get it worked out in my head and it's just not ready I'm not comfortable with it I may not even do it at all I try to make my patreon tutorials something different than what I would do in the normal polymer clay tutorials videos that I do and I've been doing a lot. People seem to want to learn how to make canes, and so I'm constantly making canes. And I just wanted to do something a little different for, for you guys. So what I've decided to do right now, it may change next month, is to actually do a project rather than a cane. I want to do some kind of a project. It may or may not involve a cane. You know, if it does, then we'll make a cane and then finish our project. But um, what I wanted to show you today was how to do uh, a faux enamel look or a cloisonné look. I don't know if you've seen cloisonné before, but it's a um, enameling on metal. And it's used a lot in jewelry. You've seen probably seen some on decorative eggs and things like that. But I'm going to show you how you can do one out of polymer clay. And we're going to start with some black clay and this is Kato poly clay. I have it right here. I've got this close in because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to do an entirely different design here than what I did on the one that I baked only because I don't need two of the same thing. But what we're going to do is actually make a mold first. And what I've got is a small ended ball tool. You can see these are very small ends. And it's not going to focus because it's focused down here. But they're very small ends and I'm going to take the smallest of this one. And it's very very tiny. And I'm going to draw a design. Let me just do it lightly. I think I'm going to try to do a lopsided heart this time. I 
and I'll make it lopsided on this side. I just kind of like these lopsided things. And, uh, oh, I forgot something. If you could hold on just a minute, let me, I'll be right back. Well, and I have to apologize again. I'm going to have to stop shortly because when I went out to get what I wanted, my dogs let me know they needed to go outside. So they are outside now. Um, I think I'm going to be happy with that shape. Anyway, as you can see, I did a uh, just a light scratching with the ball tool in the shape of a heart. Now what I'm going to do with the smallest end is I'm going to go over it and you'll get some clay build up on your stylus and that's normal just wipe it off you'll also get these little rolled up pieces you can see that and it's on your clay you just have to brush it with your fingers and roll them off but just go over this line a couple of times and get it you know deep not not so deep it goes all the way through your clay but en enough to where it's the shape that you want and you'll be able to use this as like a, you're going to use this like you would a rubber stamp and you just go over it a couple of times you want it to be smooth and all the same depth okay I think that's going to be deep enough and brush off see all these little things that brush off just make sure you brush them all off and that there's none sitting down in these little valleys And you kind of do this if you've done any zentangling. You know how you'll take a, usually a, with a zentangle, it's usually a square. And then you draw lines and do different designs between the lines. In this case, I'm going to draw lines on my heart. And I'm going to do it lightly first. and kind of vary the sizes here and I think I'm going to do this kind of the same there I think that looks kind of interesting so let me do these lines and you'll bring those down go over them several times until they're the same depth as this outer edge just remember not to press so hard that it goes all the way through your clay because this is not a thick piece of clay see it's not very thick so you don't want to go down but so far I think that's going to work for that line Okay, I think that one's going to work okay. Probably keep, I should have kept it pretty simple and done not quite so many lines, but I'm not always doing the simple things. Anyway, I was talking to you about the um, Patreon tutorials um, um, I forgot what I was gonna say I'm thinking about my dogs I'm thinking about the TV is up too loud in the other room thinking about doing this um, if you could do me a favor I do have and thanks to you guys 
because you are my largest contributors. I'm up to almost a hundred dollars a month in support. It shows a little different on my Patreon page because of course there's fees for everything and I don't know what you see when you go to my page. When I go to my page there's a running total of what my Patreon contributions are. And right now it says it's over a hundred dollars but if I go to my account and look at my projected payout it's only going to be like ninety six dollars ninety five anyway it's going to be at least five dollars less than what it shows on my page because of the fees but you know they've got to make money too so I really I mean that's great I think it's fantastic that I've got such loyal patrons and that they're willing to contribute to my support so I can continue to make these videos but I need just a, I probably need about twice as much as what I'm getting now at a minimum in order to keep me from having to go out and get a job the ideal situation would have been for me to have the job and start this and then just decrease it as my support increase but that's not going to work and I don't know if I've told you guys before my age but I am 70 years old people are amazed when they see my videos they said they had no idea I was 70 but trust me I am every bit of it but I feel like I'm an active 70 well, let me pause in that conversation and show you what I'd like to do. I think I'd like to make little lines in this one, and I'm going to do it lightly. And I'll probably do that in every other one. And I'm not sure. Um, I think I'm going to leave that the way it is. Anyway, let me go ahead and do these lines while I'm thinking on the rest and finish my conversation. But I was telling you that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciative of the support I'm getting. It's just not quite enough to help me. Um, in the way that I need in order to not get another job. And at 70, I just don't, I don't want to go out and work. I don't want to work until I die. But um, if you guys could help me out a little, um, I'm not going to ask you for more money, I promise. But if you could maybe make a comment. I'm going to do another face-to-face -face video before too long. And maybe in the video if you could make a comment about the tutorials that you're getting by being a, Patre a Patreon supporter. It might help someone else decide to, you know, give me some support. Um, it may not, but I don't, I don't know how you guys feel. I feel better about helping a cause if I know somebody else is also giving and helping the cause. So the more uh, exposure, I was trying to think of the word, that I get from my tutorials on Patreon the better it might be. And it might not change anything. That's not your responsibility. But, you know, if you get a chance, if we're doing something and you get an opportunity to make a comment, you know, please do. Um, it would really help. You could 
put put something on my Facebook page. You can comment on a video. It could be just about anything. And I hear my dog barking, so let me go let them in, and I will be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Hopefully I won't be interrupted again. And let me let me just finish. I'm going to put lines on this one too. In a different direction. And just make those deeper. And you want the thing is to make all of your lines the same depth. And like I said, this is going to be a mold. This is not your finished project. And if you mess up and you don't like what you're doing, just ball it up and re-roll your clay and start over again. But this this can be this is very therapeutic to sit here and <coughs> excuse me sit here and just doodle you know they said zen tangling was very therapeutic and very restful and relaxing well i think this is too cuz you just that's kind of what you're doing only you're doodling on clay instead of on paper had to check just to make sure that my camera was on. I have never done that before. Had the camera. Evidently when I put my memory card in, I turned it on not realizing I turned it on. So then after that, when I thought I was turning it on, I was turning it off and vice versa. So, and I think I'm going to, I don't know how this will work. I'm going to try putting dots in here and see how that works. Of course, I won't be doing this. Um, we'll be doing this on the tutorial because this one has to be baked. But this is what I came up with here. I think it's kind of interesting. This one I might, might be one of my favorites so far. And I'll put that over there to bake. And I'm just going to pick up all these little clay pieces. Because I don't want it getting all over everything. So what you would do with the Kato or with Primo is put it in the oven and bake it at 275. And I would bake it for 30 minutes because you want it to be strong. And this is the one that I did this morning. The one that got erased or didn't ever record. And I thought I would make this into a pin. And I don't know whether it will be in that direction or that direction but this is my mold so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move let me show you some of these others these are some that I've made in the past actually this is not this is an impression that I made of somebody else's that had made this design so this is raised and I'd have to do a double impression on this to get it the way I wanted that looks like it's just a stamp and then here's another one that the petal part is recessed so I could probably um, I'd have to do a double a double um, impression on that too in order to get it the way it needs to be but this one all the lines are going down and that's what you want but it's kind of rough on top so the next thing you would do 
is to just sand this lightly and I think I'll do it this way just sand it lightly to kind of smooth out the top of it because you don't want top uh, to be rough I'm just going to spritz this with water and spritz that with water and that may help a little bit and just give it a good sanding because you want it to to be smooth I think that's all I needed to do. So let me just just wipe off my sanding sponge. It's a washable sponge. And I will rinse this off. I may have to go run this. Well, if I do it a lot, I can spray. This is a pretty heavy spray bottle I've got. And just let it dry or dry it off, whichever. May as well clean up a little bit while I'm doing it. take the mask back off. Hopefully I won't need that anymore. But you need to get this dry. Of course the best thing to do is just let it dry on its own, but we don't have time for that, do we? So I think that's going to be dry enough. Now the next thing I need you need to do is to get out some uh, liquid Kato or liquid um, Sculpey. Was it Translu translucent liquid Sculpey? That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I still see some pieces of water in there. Um, but you, any kind of a liquid clay will do. Even the Fimo gel would work if you have that. But we're not, we don't need that yet. All right, like I said, this is our mold. So since I took the piece that I was going to use and made my second design, I need to run this through the pasta machine a couple of times. So just a minute. Okay, so what you need to do now is get another piece of, of clay, put it on top, put it on top, make sure it's all covered. I think I'll do it this one there. Make sure it's all covered. And then take your roller. Make sure it's clean. And just roll over it one time, but with as much pressure as you can get. You only want to do it once or you're going to get a shadow. And I like to just press. Actually, I probably should have kept the water on there now that I think about it. As a release, we'll find out how that's going to work. Now it's pretty stuck. So it's not going to come out as a clean image. Let me do this again and do it the right way with some water. 
I shouldn't, I knew I shouldn't have dried it off. Make sure nothing is stuck down in there anywhere. Actually, I'm going to take my stylus again and just run it through just to make sure. I should have, should have been a little more careful. I think it's okay. But now I've got to do my clay again. Sorry about the noise. trying to get yeah that'll work all right now I'm not going to use that much water again I'm going to use my mister and just miss that with water and lay the good side down And then you need to miss the top. With Kato, you don't really need to miss the top, but it's to keep the roller from sticking to it. But again, hold on at the bottom and just press as hard as you can as you roll, but just roll over at one time. Then you can wipe the water off of your rod. And then press and make sure that this gets down into the little grooves that you made. And then let's peel it off. Oh, it didn't press in very well. It might be enough. I'll never get it back in the same place again, so I'm going to try it this way. But these dents here are not quite as deep as they could be. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going back to my little stylus. And in those areas, I'm just going to press down a little bit right next to where those ridges are. And just help give it a little bit more definition. Just like you're drawing again, just press in a little bit. Actually, this helps anyway because the way a stamp works, you have uh, sharp edges and round edges, and the round edges are at the bottom of your stamp. So that means when you make your impression, the round edge is at the top of your image. So this way, it just kind of presses it back into a sharper image. I don't know if I'm making any sense at all to you. And I think I'm going to do all of it. I may as well, just to make sure. I only want to do this once. I don't like doing things two and three times. But all you're doing is tracing the raised areas. And just pressing down gently. In this case, you'll come up the other side. I 
I think this will work fine. No need to redo it. Do need to get inside these little swirls that I did. There, I think that'll be fine. Now this is a good time to trim and I'm working on paper towel which I probably shouldn't be doing. Where's my tile? I think I'll put it back in here. Make sure you've got all the water off of your clay. But this is a good time to trim with either a knife or a um, blade, whatever. Let me trim down closer with this. Just to kind of get it close to where I want it to be. Because what I really would like to do is leave a little bit of an edge. I don't think this is going to bend in the dir direction I need it to. So where's my bendable blade? Under my paper towel. I'm going to cut this just about an eighth of an inch outside of where see this let me see if I can show you this my line that's sitting up is right here so I'm going to cut it maybe an eighth of an inch outside of that just to give it a little, little bit of an edge this one is the only straight line And you can do it in sections. You don't your blade doesn't always bend the way you want it to bend. This is the kind of claying I like to do, just sitting and playing and figuring out what I'm going to do next. And you might want to take something to kind of smooth these edges a little bit. Okay, so that's going to be the general shape of this pen. Now, what I'd like to do is to get some um, perfect pearls. And these work better than the Pearl X. People will tell you that they work the same, but trust me, perfect pearls works better than Pearl X. There's a binder in the perfect pearls that um, will bind, it actually bonds to the polymer clay, and Pearl X does not have that doesn't mean Pearl X isn't as good, it's just that Pearl X doesn't have that binder. So I want to put, I know I want purple, and maybe some, i use that blue, and then either some, I don't know what I'll use for the rest. We'll see. Anyway, what you need to do is take a tiny brush, tiny little brush, and I don't think this has been opened. How did I get one that hadn't been opened? Oh, I think these are some new ones I got from Tupelo Designs, LLC. I'm going to go out a little bit just for a little while just so you can see what I'm doing and then I'll zoom back in. I'm 
think I'll put the lid closest to me. But and let me decide where I'm going to put what. I think I'm going to alternate. I wish I had a pink. I don't have a pink. Maybe that's what I need to order next from Tupelo. I think I'll start with the purple. And you take some on your brush and then put your brush in the top and just dab it because you don't need a whole lot. And let's see. Let me go get something. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm sorry for that interruption. Anyway, let me make sure I've got some purple on my brush. And I'm going to paint with the perfect pearls. Inside this area. Trying not to get it on the raised areas, but if it gets on there, it's okay. We will take care of that. Trying to get as close to that raised area as I can. And I think I'll do the purple on every other one in this section. I like the way this purple pops on the black clay. It's always best to start either with black or white. I like the black because the like I said it it pops better you can use white clay but it'll look a little bit different I'm sorry if this is boring See here, I don't have any choice but to get it on the raised area, but we'll take care of that in a little while. Okay, I see an area where I didn't. This is called incising. When you go around, your area, you can also press down if you want where it's all the way around instead of leaving these little raised areas I just didn't do the swirls as well as I thought I did I think I was trying to be in too much of a hurry, which happens to me a lot. I'm just going over all the areas that I'm going to be painting with the stylus. Just so it'll be separate from the rest from the rest of the design. So don't go over where you have the raised area like I just did. Hopefully I can redeem that. 
I should have done this on the purple areas because I went around the edges but I didn't go across the middle to get that little ridge out. That's all right. All is good. It's polymer clay. They say there are no mistakes with polymer clay, only more more opportunities. This is like coloring, isn't it? Nothing any more boring than watching somebody color. Hopefully that'll work. Okay, and I'm going to wipe the purple off my brush. And then I'm going to do the blue. Take some of the blue and put it in the top. And again, paint up to the raised area. But try not to deliberately paint it if, with the powder. If you get it on there, it's not that big a deal. We, like I said, we can take care of that in a later step. I think this blue and this purple look really well together. Now where I've done this incising, is that what it's called, incising? With the ball tool, it's going to give it some texture, which is going to make it really interesting when we finish. Just take your time. That's the hardest thing I can I have. The hardest thing for me to do is to take my time. I am an instant gratification person, and the quicker I can get something done, the better I am. So this is really hard for me. What, I'm, what you usually do with cloisonne jewelry, there's a line of the raised area is usually gold in cloisonne. So I'm going to be putting gold on these raised areas. I think, let me see. No, I think I like those smooth. I was going to do something to the purple, but I think because there's texture in the blue, I'm going to leave it smooth. So since there, the lines are going to be gold, I'm going to try to put something different. Sorry, I'm putting my perfect pearls away before I sneeze and they go flying everywhere. So I need to put something different up here in this top. So since the lines are going to be gold, I wonder how... Well, here's a red. Let me do the red. This is forever red. And I don't even need to put any in the lid of this. But I don't know if this brush is going to be fine enough to get in where I need it. Do I have a finer brush? I'm sure I do. Let me go check my brushes. I'll be right back. Uh, 
I did find a little skinny brush. See the little skinny brush? I just hope that I can get enough powder on it to get where I need to go. Trying to stay off of the raised areas. I always said I wasn't a painter. But I do like to color. I don't usually have time to color. And turn your piece if you need to. It's, it's, that's why it's better to put it on a tile. Because you don't want to pick it up and move it. And the tile can go in the oven. See, that little point will go in that little tiny groove. I think it did. So, like you see, this red isn't really like a blood red or a Christmas red. It's more like a, I don't know what kind of red you'd call it. A rosy red. A coppery red. I'm almost done, guys. If you want to fast forward through this, I don't mind at all. I won't even know. Now, because this is a private video, I would rather you not share this with anybody. I don't know that it, you can share it because it is private. I don't know how that's going to work. And I probably don't have to tell you that. You guys are the best. And I don't think you would do anything that would hurt me. Okay, I think... I think that is all we can do right now. What I'm going to have to do is stick this back in the oven for maybe 10 minutes, just enough to set the powder, and then we will come back and do some more. So I will be back. Okay, I'm back, and everything, or my pen is baked. Now you can see on here that I've gotten some of the perfect pearls on the raised areas. And all we're going to do with that is if I can find my sanding block that I had earlier I don't remember putting it back but maybe I did huh oh there it is 
I'm just going to sand this lightly. It wasn't really stuck, was it? I'm just going to sand it lightly, and that's going to get rid of the perfect pearls on the raised areas. And some got through here. So I'll just sand that a little bit. But this pretty much took care of the, I'll tell you what, let me mist it again. It's just getting a little unruly here. It just moves better when there's some water on there. There we go. We're finished with that tile for a while. And I'm just wiping this off. Of course, it would have been better if I'd put all my tools away first so I don't have them rolling all over the place. Now, if you see that you sand it off any of your perfect pearls, like I did right here, I sanded that off a little bit. It's very easy to just put a little bit back on there. I think that's the only place that got messed up. Let me put them away. And I'm going to get, oh, I forgot to get my gold paint out. Um, I don't think a gold pen is going to work. Let me pause this for a minute while I go find my gold paint. Okay, what I've got is some uh, Liquitex Iridescent Rich Gold. And let's just see how that's going to look on here. And I'll just put it down on my tile. Now I can do two things. I can use my finger I don't know. Well, let's try it. I'm just going to put a little bit on my finger and just try. No, oh, it's not going to go just on the raised areas. So let me go back to my thin little brush and some water. I know you can't see this because I'm out of the shot, but I'm just mixing some water with this thick paint. And I'm just going to paint it on just along the raised areas. have to hold my mouth just a certain way to get this on here. It's been a long time since I've done this and I may have sanded it a bit too much. 
because I just about got rid of all the raised area along here. I can see where it should be, but it's not there anymore. So I'm going to have to fiddle with this a little bit. to get this paint on there or I could do another design I've got enough molds here but I kind of like this the raised area should be up high enough that I could have taken my finger and rubbed across it but I believe I sanded too much of it off. But I can go over it with this thin little brush. I probably could have gotten by with not watering this down, but I was afraid on this little brush it would cake and then glop. That's another technical term. I always use technical terms when I talk to you guys. Like smush. That's a Marla Frankenberg term, the smush. Again, I'm being very quiet, which I tend to do when I'm doing tedious work, and to me this is tedious, because it's not going to take much for me to mess this up, and if anybody could mess it up, it's going to be me, but I always seem to find a way to fix it. You see this shiny gold is what gives it the cloisonne look. I probably should have started on another piece, but I just really like this. I like the colors, and I didn't want to have to bake another piece. I've already baked it a couple times, and just didn't want to bake it anymore. Just plain as that. Maybe I ought to play music on my videos so you can at least have that to listen to while I'm doing this. Maybe I'll fast forward through this if I, I still haven't figured out how to do that without doing it to the whole video. These lines are up a little bit higher than the others, so I must not have sanded these as much. But you can see why it's important that you have deep etches in here without going all the way through the clay. 
because you do need to sand in order to get the roughness off and to get your mica powders off. Hopefully you're at least getting the idea, even if this didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to. We can have one of those do as I say, not as I do moments, couldn't we? What I'm concerned about is, because we're supposed to fill this with liquid clay, and I'm a little concerned that these lines aren't deep enough to hold the liquid clay. Let me spray this brush. Because it's a fairly new brush. I don't want to ruin it with dried paint. I don't want to dip it back in the paint, and I just saw a place. Let me try a toothpick. You know how I am with toothpicks. You can just do all kinds of things with a toothpick. Just seeing little tiny places that I missed. Okay, I'm going to be good with that. I do want to get rid of that gold right there in the center. And I don't know if I can do it with this or not. Without messing the whole thing up. I said center. It's If this were round, it would be the center. But it's here on the edge. I got gold where it doesn't need to be. I misread the flat line. See, I can, even when I mess up, I can usually figure out a way to get around it. I mean, wet a Q-tip. go along there. That's better. It's still not ideal. Let's see. What else? Let me go look in my sanding box. I've got more stuff. I have, oops. I have a whole box full of sanding things. And I do believe have some little sanding sticks like these. So let me see if I can get that up in there. This is, I need a thicker one than that. That one is kind of puny. I think they're all on the bottom because I don't use them that much. Look at these little things. Look at all these files I have. And let me try maybe this one. Because it's kind of curved. I think that works pretty good. There we go. All gone. Let's get all the dust off. 
there. That looks a little neater. I believe this is dry. No, it's not. It just got gold on my finger. But what I'm what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just hit it with the heat gun a little bit. I'm going to wipe up this paint before I do that because I don't want to dry the paint on my tile. I'm just going to try, hit it with the heat gun for just a little bit just to get the paint dry. Now that this is baked, you can do that. You can't do it when it's raw, but you can use a heat gun when it's baked. And we're going to be using the heat gun again in a little while. But that should that should do it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some liquid. I'm going to take liquid Kato. You can take uh, the liquid Kato. You can take uh, trans uh, translucent. This is bakeable transfer and color medium, but it's translucent liquid Sculpey is what this is. Um, and I may even have some Fimo gel somewhere. What is this? Is this it? The Fimo decorating gel. You can use that. So, do you see that? The Fimo. But you can use any of these, but I've always preferred the liquid Kato. And some people don't like it, but I love it. And I'm going to, let's see, I have, where are my brushes for my Kato? They might be in my drawer. I use special brushes for Kato because, it, whoops, it doesn't dry. You know, you can leave it wet and it just stays wet. Here we go. So when I use a brush for the Kato, so this has been, it's been months, and see it's still wet. So, keep your Kato, your liquid clay brushes separate. And for this layer, I'm going to just squeeze some out here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint a very thin sheet. I'm going to even put it on the black. Very thin layer of this. And then I'm going to cure it with the heat gun and then we'll go back and put a thick coat of it on here. So I'm going to just go around the edges first and I'm doing it on the black because the black wasn't shiny anymore from where I sanded it and this will give it a little bit more of a shine. It's also going to seal in the perfect pearls This is just a very thin layer. I love my little squeeze bottle. But I'm just going to go over everything. It'll seal in the gold. It'll seal in the perfect pearls. And I might I see where Where that where I put in the other where I I'll get my thoughts straight in a minute. This has been a long day. It's now about 7:30 in the evening, and I am I've been going all day. But I'm going to use the liquid Kato to hold this purple in place where I sanded it off. Remember that. because it doesn't really do well on baked clay. To 
just going to dab it there so I don't move it. But anyway, then I'm just... doing a very thin layer. Like I say, this isn't the final. I'm just going to use this because I know what I'm doing, so if, if you feel confident doing this, you can. But you just don't want too much. But this is going to look really neat. And this liquid Kato really brings out the colors. You'll find that it'll just bring them really, it'll just make them all pop. So now the only place I have to get is around on the red, or in this case pink. I said I wished I had pink. My red ended up being pink. But if you put this little thin coat on before you put your thick coat on, you stand a better chance of not getting bubbles. Which can really hamper things because this is too thin to have any bubbles in it. I think I've got that all done. So what I'm going to do here is move my liquid Kato out of the way. And I'm going to use the heat gun on this. You can cure liquid clay with the heat gun. And Sorry, I had a... But this will cure I mean, the liquid clay. And I'm doing it on a tile so that you know, this is raw clay over here. I don't want that getting baked. Move that out of the way. Now, liquid Kato goes on cloudy, and when the cloudiness starts to go away, that's when you know it's cured. But when it dries, it has a nice, not a shiny gloss finish, but a little bit of a gloss finish. So I'm beginning to see some of the cloudiness going away. I've told you before, I believe, that with Kato clay, you can bake it at a higher temperature. And with the liquid Kato, I think this is about done. With the liquid Kato, you can use the heat gun because the, the heat doesn't hurt it. Now we'll let this cool a little bit. just going to pick up a few of my scraps and everything. I went ahead and baked the heart that I made. So now I have another, while well, this is cooling, so now I have another um, texture to use. I'm wetting my paper and I'm wetting this. I don't want to do it too much. I think that's what I did before is I just sanded too much just trying to get it smooth. So I'm not going to go any more with this. But while this is cooling, I will go through here 
with my ball tool again. Just make sure all my lines are done. And then I'm just going to let this sit here and dry. Let's see where I put it over there. Okay, this ought to be. See, it's already dry, and you can see that. But what we're going to do now, now that it's dry, we're going to put a thicker layer of the Kato on it. Now if you don't have a thin applicator like this you, you're going to want to use a brush and I have my brush out here in case I need it but I'm going to just fill these little cavities As you can see how it's it goes on cloudy But I'm going to make sure I stay off of the gold. It's already sealed with the other thin layer of the liquid Kato. And I'm just going to fill these in. And then when this is cured, it's going to look like enamel. I kind of put a little bit too much there. It's really not going to matter if it goes over the gold. But I didn't want that much over the gold. And then you ought to let it sit for a little while. To see if there's any air bubbles that form. See there's a couple little bubbles there. And it's better to let it sit for maybe about a half an hour. So that it will, um, if there's any air bubbles, they'll come to the top, and then you can just take a pin, and it's going to be hard to fill these little ones, but take a pin and take them over to the bot to the edge. And Cato is also self-leveling. So it will fill in some of these little spaces that I can't get to with my tip. So again, I'm going to have to wait. This is not a project you can do in a few minutes. This one takes a little while. And a lot of it is waiting either for something to bake or in this case I, I need to let this sit for about 30 minutes so it can level and we can see if there's any air bubbles And you can see where it's separating a little bit, which just means you don't have an I don't have enough of the liquid in there. The important thing is not to let it get over this outside rim. I can already see some bubbles right here coming up and if you do see that you can take something like either a needle tool or a toothpick or my little let me spread this out a little bit you can either try to pop it that popped 
Sometimes you can pop it. Sometimes you just need to drag it over to the edge and just let it do its own thing. I think I'm going to add a little bit more and bring it up over this gold just so it'll It'll all look consistent. I may regret this. But if it doesn't do right, then you will know not to do it to yours. The reason I was doing that is because as I was trying to make sure it was level, I noticed it had little places where it looked like it was pitted and it was right up next to where this gold was and it, it didn't give it a smooth look. So rather than have that pitted look, I'm just going to fill it in. And just hope it doesn't go over this outside edge after it levels. I may have an issue on those places where I sanded, but I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to drop it a few times, which if there's any bubbles on the bottom, they'll come up to the top. And I still see a couple little pits, and I don't know whether to fill it in or let it self-level. So when in doubt, more is better, right? <laughs> and here's a little bubble right here. That was easy to pop. And where'd my Q-tip go? Well, don't know what I did with my Q-tip. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit. And then we need to put this back in the oven. If, if I don't have any problems, I'm going to let it go back into the oven and with the Kato, I can go as high, maybe even over 300 degrees. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it at 275. And then we'll come back and we'll hit it with the heat gun and we'll be done, except for putting a pin back on it. So, I will see you again after this is baked. Hey, I'm back, and I'm beginning to feel like there's something cursed about me getting a tutorial out this month. Uh, again, and I don't know what happened this time, I finished this, and I also recorded this, uh, and then when I went to upload the video to, the, uh, to YouTube, this one was on for about... The one about finishing this was on from maybe 10 seconds, and then that was the end of it. So what I'm thinking is my, um, my camera must have run out of memory. I really need to get a larger memory card. I've got a, I think it's a 32 gig, and I think I need a 64 gig in order to... Um, get this done but so anyway I'm going to try again to uh, explain what I did and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do so maybe I can still get to show you a little bit I let me sh let me come in there's my pen and what I had done 
is I filled in everything. I think you saw that. You'll, you filled in everything with the liquid clay. I baked it in the oven. And when it came out, this along here and along where I covered up the gold, the gold was not showing up very well. So I took the heat gun to it because this also, one thing about Kato clay, liquid clay, is that um, when it's cured in the oven, unless you take the oven up to a high um, temperature, and when I say high, like over 300 degrees, then the liquid clay still will be slightly cloudy when it comes out. And what you do is you take a heat gun, which is right here, and use the heat gun on it. And I, it was really a neat thing to see. I wish you had seen it. But as I'm heating it with the heat gun, all of a sudden the gold started appearing. But this is still not smooth. It seems like this, these here settled in a little bit into the grooves and they're not smooth. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit more liquid clay, liquid Kato, and cure it with the heat gun. And hopefully you'll be able to see something there. But one thing I need to do is right in here, see those little white spots? Those are air bubbles. And I need to sand that and then um, fill that in with, with liquid clay, too. So I'm just going to spritz this with some water. And I'm going to spritz this with some water. Let me go back out so you can see what I'm doing. Spritzing my sandpaper or my sanding sponge with some water. And I'm just going to sand this a little bit, especially where those little circles are, the little white places. It's liquid clay, once it's baked, it's just basically the same thing as your regular clay, except it doesn't have uh, pigment in it. And I don't know if this is going to be a strong enough sanding sponge to get in there. I think I'm going to have to go back. I didn't want to go to the medium again. But I think I'm going to have to. I was hoping the fine one would take care of those little spots, but it's not. Let me just sand right along in there a little bit. And it may not work. It may not sand them out. Maybe filling it in with clay will help. But I would like to get rid of those little white spots. I tell you, I have had more problems with this video than all of my other videos put together. That's why I think it's cursed. Let's see, that's not working very well either. Let me find... Oh, that's not going to work. Let me go back to my stash of files and see if I can find one. That might work. Does that go all the way to the end? Yes, it does. So let me see if I can get in there a little bit with the file. now there's space between my piece and me so I don't know if I can get in there or not because I can't see what I'm doing because I have my sanding stuff sitting in my lap I'm going to try this let me dry it off I've scratched the surface, so maybe, but I'm also going to add some more in this area here to bring it up more towards the 
the top of the um, top of the enamel piece. So let me add a little bit of clay here. And my brush is still out. See, this is left from yesterday and it's still out, so I don't know if that's going to get down in those little areas or not. Doesn't look like it is. I wonder if I actually drill it. And make little holes if that might help and if I ruin this I've got my heart that I can work on now let's just see if that works and then I'm gonna fill in see that one feels okay that one it's when I start getting to this one is when it's not quite level so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spread this out and then brush across so it will level itself out. I promise you this video is going to get finished. And again, the edges are still not real smooth, so I'm going to put a little bit along the edges. I'm going to try to only put enough so that the clay can be cured with the heat gun. If it, you put it on too thick, it almost needs to go in the oven. Hopefully this will work this time. Because I am certainly not going to try to do this video over for a third time. So what you're getting is it. I don't, I'm at the point I don't really care how it turns out anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think that ought to level it out some. Make sure I don't have any bubbles. There's a little bubble right there. If you get a bubble, you can take a little pin or a toothpick or whatever and take it over. Well, it must have popped because now I don't see it. Okay. So let me try this again and keep your clay away from the heat gun and let me come in and so you can see any changes. I don't know if you'll see any this time because it's not real milky now. It was milky before and it was really kind of cool watching it change from milky to clear. But this might still happen because there's some, like along the edges, you can see it's a milky substance on the edges, which is the liquid Kato. You just always keep your heat gun moving because you don't want to burn it. Because burning the liquid is just as toxic as burning the, the hard clay or the regular clay. You just keep your gun moving. And let's just see what we see. I don't know if you can tell that some of this gold over here is dull where I went over it with the liquid potato. But now that's milkiness along this side has gone away and I know you can't see it 
but as the milkiness goes away, the gold appears better. And this area along here has got some milky liquid clay in it. And I don't think it cleared up the little white holes. But it doesn't look that bad. Looks worse probably to me than to anybody. I believe this is all cured now. Doesn't take long because the heat gun gets a lot hotter than an oven does. And you have to be careful not to get it to the hot enough that it'll bubble. But anyway, that is the end of this video. <laughs> oh, and it's not y'all's fault. It's I just don't know what has been going on. But anyway, so this is my faux enamel. I will take this and I will back it on another piece of clay and trim it the same size as this and then put a pin back on it. Or I might put a pendant loop on it. Um, I can't do anything with it right now because it's very hot. But I thank you so much for watching and I thank you for being patient with me. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know what caused all this weirdness this time. But hopefully this will be the last of the weirdness. So thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.